Water is a pretty amazing substance. It's vital for all life as we know it. Take humans for example. We're made up of 70% water by weight, and we can't go a few days without water. Water has some really interesting properties. Take this glass of ice water for example. Now I know you're thinking, what's so special about a glass of ice water? Well, the solid version of water floats on top of the liquid version. I know that doesn't sound that impressive, but for most substances, the solid version will sink inside of the liquid version. When substances become solid, they almost always become more dense than the liquid version. So solids are supposed to sink. Water's incredible properties are due to the unique shape and structure of the water molecule, H2O. This video is all about water. So what are we gonna learn in this video? Well, first we're gonna learn about the polarity and hydrogen bonding of the water molecule. Then we'll learn about water's high surface tension. We'll learn about its high specific heat and boiling point. We'll learn why the solid version of water is less dense than the liquid version of water. And then finally, we'll learn how water is the solvent of life. Water is a molecule made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. The oxygen is in the center of the molecule and it's covalently bonded with the hydrogen atoms. The covalent bonds are shown with these solid lines between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms. There are two electrons that are being shared in a covalent bond. One electron came from the oxygen and one came from the hydrogen. The molecule looks bent, like this. Each hydrogen has two valence electrons. They are both inside of the bonds. The oxygen has eight valence electrons. Four are in bonds and the other four are lone pairs. The lone pairs are up here on the top of the oxygen and the bonds are coming down the bottom. Sometimes the electrons are being shared evenly in a covalent bond. Other times the electrons are not being shared evenly. A covalent bond is a bit like a tug of war, where the atoms involved in the bond may have different strengths. The strength of an atom is measured by its electronegativity, which is the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. Oxygen has a much greater electronegativity than hydrogen, so oxygen attracts the electrons in the bonds closer to itself. Electrons are negatively charged particles, and because the electrons in these bonds are closer to the oxygen, the oxygen has a slightly negative charge. Since the electrons are pulled away from the hydrogen atoms, the hydrogen atoms have a slightly positive charge. These slight charges are indicated with the symbol delta negative and delta positive. Molecules are attracted to one another. Some molecules attract more strongly than other molecules. Intermolecular forces are the forces of attraction between molecules. There are three major types of intermolecular forces. London dispersion force is the weakest forces of attraction. Dipole forces are stronger, and hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force of attraction. Hydrogen bonds are the intermolecular forces that hold water molecules together. Hydrogen bonds are not real bonds like covalent bonds or ionic bonds, but they are very strong forces of attractions nonetheless. Water's properties are a result of water molecules bent shape and the ability to hydrogen bond. Ever notice water beating up on a window like this? This beating is the result of water molecules cohesion. That is the ability of water molecules to stick to one another. This is due to water molecules ability to hydrogen bond. Water has a very high cohesion compared to other molecules and life literally depends on the high cohesion of water. It's because of this high cohesion that water can move up a tree from the roots to the leaves, moving against the force of gravity. Associated with the cohesion of water is water's high surface tension. Surface tension is a measure of how difficult it is to break through the surface of a liquid. The surface tension of water is so high that some creatures can even walk or run across the surface of water. Water has an incredibly high ability to absorb and store heat. This ability is measured as the specific heat of water. Specific heat of a substance is the amount of heat that must be absorbed for one gram of the substance to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. In other words, it takes a lot of heat to raise the temperature of water compared to other substances. Why is that? Well, once again, it comes down to water's ability to hydrogen bond. Heat is really just a measure of how fast molecules are moving. The motion is measured as kinetic energy, the energy of motion. Hot molecules have a lot of kinetic energy. They are moving fast and cold molecules have only a little bit of kinetic energy. They are moving slow. Water molecules are stuck together with hydrogen bonds very strongly, and it's tough to get them moving. Generally, substances become more dense as they change from a gas to a liquid and then to a solid. So for the most part, solids will sink in their liquid counterparts. Solid water, on the other hand, floats in liquid water. 
It is only one of a few substances where the solid is less dense than the liquid. Solid water is less dense than liquid water because of water's ability to hydrogen bond and the unique shape of the water molecule. As a liquid, water molecules are free to flow past one another, and they're fairly densely packed. When the water becomes solid, the molecules stop flowing and they are locked in place. The oxygen of one molecule links to the hydrogen of another molecule, creating this unique crystal structure. This structure is less dense than liquid because of all the open spaces, so ice floats. If it wasn't for floating ice, there may be no life on Earth as we know it. If ice sank, bodies of water, lakes, rivers, and even oceans would eventually freeze solid from the bottom up. Ice floats, so an insulating layer is created on top of bodies of water, while liquid water below can sustain life. Life will continue to live even in the winter. Water is the solvent of life. Basically that means that life happens inside of water. The simplest forms of life began in water, in the oceans. The human body is about 70% water. Our cells are filled with water, our blood is mainly water, and life is mostly water. Life relies on water's ability to dissolve the nutrients that we need to live. Water is really good at creating solutions, where it acts as the solvent. A solution is made up of solute that is dissolved in a solvent. There are two types of substances that can be solutes in water, ionic compounds and polar covalent compounds. Remember that water molecules have these partial positive and negative charges. Water likes to mix with other things that have charges. Ionic compounds are made of ions, and when ionic compounds dissolve, they split apart. The positively charged ion gets surrounded by the oxygen part of water molecules, and the negatively charged ion gets surrounded by the hydrogen part of the water molecules. Polar covalent bonds have partial charges, so they will also mix with water as the partial negatives and partial positives attract to one another. So did you learn everything in this video? Well, if you did, you learned that water is a polar molecule composed of hydrogen and oxygen, and water molecules are strongly attracted to one another because of their ability to hydrogen bond. Water molecules have a high surface tension. Water has a high specific heat. Solid water is one of the few substances where the solid floats on top of the liquid. And finally, you learned that water is the solvent of life.